Hi, we're here to talk about the new iPhone 5S from Apple. As you can see, it's very similar in design to the iPhone 5. It's got a two-tone back as before, made out of aluminium. The chamfer dentures are back in force. But one difference here now is the home button has been changed to include a Touch ID fingerprint sensor. So visually very similar, apart from the home button, which is possibly the most iconic part of the iPhone, has now been updated. Also, we're running iOS 7, so as you can see, everything has been updated. The way the apps look, the icons, everything's a lot flatter, a lot more colorful and things just generally look a little bit more advanced and it's what Apple needs to retake really the phone to the next generation. In terms of updates in the iPhone 5, the iPhone 5S features as mentioned the Touch ID fingerprint sensor, an improved camera and the A7 chip. Now the A7 chip is an interesting one because it now makes the iPhone 64-bit enabled. This means that it's a lot more powerful, it has a lot more possibilities for the future but as it stands it's possibly more of a marketing piece than it is anything more that the user can actually get hold of. Apps will need to be retooled in 64-bit to really take advantage of this. So initially, consumers aren't going to get the benefit that possibly Apple wants them to. But in the future, maybe the iPhone 6, iPhone 6S, this is really going to come to the fore and apps are going to be that much more richer. In terms of the camera, this is probably one of the most exciting parts of the new iPhone 5S. As you can see with iOS 7, the interface has changed quite a lot. You've now got a lot of modes that you can swipe through just by sw swiping your finger left and right. And basically it means that everything's a lot more simple, it's a lot more easy to use. And as you can see here, we've also got slow-mo on offer. And this is dedicated just for the iPhone 5S. What it allows you to do is take a video, and then once the video is over, you press stop, have a quick look at it, and then you can choose how you want to actually move this. So if you just press play, the video itself, We'll just go slowly, but then you go to the beginning and you can say, right, I'd like just this bit here to be slow and the rest of it to be fast. And so basically there you can choose to make the elements you want slow and the rest of it can be sped up and improved the way that you want it to be. It's a very simple system. It uses Apple's tabs for trimming and really it's just a really nice feature. Is it going to be one that you're going to buy the phone for? Probably not because simply put, it just makes things a little bit slower. It makes a cool video, it's not a useful video as such. Plus it's at 120 frames per second at 720p. For a lot of people that'll be enough because it's still HD and it's still a very slow footage, but it would be nice to see 1080p on offer given the iPhone can handle it, maybe at 60 frames per second, giving you some different options in the camera. In terms of the actual camera itself, we've still got the same eight megapixel sensor, but it's been improved quite a lot by making the pixels a little bit larger. Now this means that the user can change the way they use the phone because it operates better in low light, has better sharpness, and generally just improves the way the camera functions. So the way that, you know, thanks to the A7 process on board as well, the imaging is a lot quicker. So you can take a photo much faster. You now also get burst mode, so 10 photos a second, and they'll just keep going, keep saving themselves to the memory. Obviously, that's not great if you want to have loads of photos, but what Apple does is it really, it better than other competitors, will go through and decide the best photo for you and you can choose that whether you want to or not. But basically it gives you the chance to really get the best photo out of everything. And that's really nice to have to, instead of having to work it out yourself, Apple can do it for you. And we've seen this on other phones, but really with the iPhone, it's actually one of the better implementations of it. So once you've chosen your favorite, you can save that there. You've also got a couple of other options here. The square mode, which is great for profile pictures, perhaps Instagram. And then you've got panoramic mode again once more which we've seen on other devices, but again, Apple really has nailed this by making it portrait rather than landscape and getting more of the photo in. So as you move the iPhone around, it'll pick up the landscape itself. So when it comes to the iPhone 5S camera, there's actually very little the user can do, which is really the atmosphere Apple wants to create. It wants a camera that can shoot and take great photos without having loads of settings to fiddle around with. So you can't ruin the photo by accidentally engaging the wrong mode. As you can see here, we've got a few options. You can do front facing, you can turn HDR on and off, or you can put the flash on and off. And that's as really as simple as it'll go. You can also choose different effects here. You know, this gives you automatic filters and these update in real time. So you can see exactly what you want to take. It's very similar to apps that have been used previously, but it embeds it better in the camera app. It's a really nice idea. You know, it does give you a, an easy way of doing things, deciding what you want to do. And it just makes everything a lot more simple. So Apple basically has improved the camera immeasurably, made it a very easy system to use. And it's going to really consolidate its position as one of the, you know, the most popular camera phones on the market simply because it's there, people can use it and people really enjoy the pictures that it comes out with. iOS 7 is the big update here. As you can see, the app icons have changed a little bit. Everything still functions roughly the same way it did before. When it comes to things like Safari, the browser URL now dynamically resizes. So you can choose exactly when you want to see it and not as you scroll up, it disappears. As you scroll down, it comes back into view. Also, the addition of the A7 chip means that internet browsing is immeasurably faster than before. No matter what you want to do on this thing, it can really get to the heart of it very, very quickly. 
Uh, you obviously have to make sure you've got good connection speeds, but when you get that and those optimum, optimum conditions are there, things really do snap around. You feel really like this is a next generation device simply because it works as you want it to do. The new icons have been changed here to make everything look a little bit more slick, but basically it's very similar to iOS 6 in the fact that you can still save things in the same way. You can say add a reading list. You can choose to have what people are doing in uh, social networks as well. But really, it just integrates everything very well together. It doesn't change the wheel in any way in terms of what Apple's done before, but it does it in a very more complete, easy to use manner. Another addition here is that you can now put folders in the same way, but you can scroll through them now, which means that you can put loads and loads of apps in one folder and just scroll through as they're having to make games one, two, three, and four, which can get irritating. With iOS 7, uh, Apple has updated a couple of areas here. First was Control Center. Swiping up from pretty much anywhere in the phone will bring this up. So you've got the choice of your music player. You've got four very quick icons here. You've got Torch, Timer, Calculator, and Camera. You can choose to AirDrop, which is a basically a way of easily sharing photos and videos to people around you with iPhones or iOS devices. And the quick links here, so turning on airplane mode, do not disturb, auto lock, and screen brightness. Everything that you really need day to day is here, and that's really nice. It's a nice way of Apple putting things in the right place at the right time. And you'd find things like torch and timer are actually much more used than you'd imagine. We've also got this translucent effect here, so that really gives the phone a sense of completeness. So it's like it's not one app competing with another one, everything's connected, everything's together. The same thing happens with the notification center at the top. As you can see here, you've got a choice of your calendar. You've also got the weather, all of your notifications, and anything you may have missed. So this could be calls or possibly text. So it's really easy and simple and looks visually very nice. iOS 7 has got a much neater, more compact, and better designed atmosphere compared to iOS 6. You know, the notification center is immeasurably better. So we really like what Apple has done there. It's really made things feel a lot more complete, and that's, that's a really nice feature to have. Another feature that's really going to capture the imagination of some people is the Touch ID sensor. Now this is a 500 dpi capacitive sensor that sits under the home button and it will register your fingerprints whenever it needs to. So basically that's on the lock screen and when you're update opening apps in iTunes. Now it's very easy to set up. Just going into there, passcode and fingerprints, entering your passcode and there you've got your fingerprints. If you've set some up already, you can choose to make sure that they're the ones there. And then you can add a fingerprint as well. So this is a very simple exercise. Put your finger on it until it buzzes over and over. Now each time I'm pressing this, the iOS 7 is learning about my fingerprint in different areas. So it's just trying to find all the different elements of it so it knows whenever I press it, it's ready. Now, you don't always press it the same way each time. Perhaps you'll move your finger around. So what this does is you just put the edges on, so the tops, the sides, the middle. And it's just letting the iPhone work out exactly where your fingerprint is so in the future when you want to do it maybe in not the exact moment it will work effectively now it's, what's interesting here is the iPhone can't actually see my fingerprint you know it's a connection within the CPU to the touch ID sensor and that's the only port that can happen so it means the iPhone can't see your fingerprints or other apps can't open it it will never get backed up to iCloud Apple has been very careful to say that your privacy is paramount here so while these fingers are stored on the iPhone, they're actually fairly invisible to the device itself. It's only the two functions that it's allowed to use that make it worth having. But it is a really neat feature, and the best thing about it is it works pretty much every time. Open it, and you feel like you're opening a phone without passcode, but with the same level of security, which is a really great feature, and it's something that's going to really resonate with Apple fans, and probably going to come to a lot of other smartphones as well soon. Other than that, it's a very similar device to before. I mean, the iPhone 5 is going to get updated to iOS 7, so you'll get a very similar slick experience. But it does feel a little bit nicer in the hand. You know, the, the addition of the home screen button being changed to a silver ring does add a premium feel. But if you're looking for a device, really think about checking out the iPhone 5C as well. It's got some interesting colors. It's a little bit cheaper on price. Apple has gone here with a higher price again. That might be too much for some, especially when the competition is so compact now and it's really got some good features out there. The HTC One, the Galaxy S4, the LG G2, even some of the Nokias and Sonys. These are really pushing them out boundaries in terms of what smartphones can do. And while Apple has got a decent device here with the iPhone 5S, it's still only a four inch screen. You know, it's still got some elements that it needs to update a little bit in the future. So when the iPhone 6 rolls around, people are going to really look to see that Apple has really pushed things forward once again and made a smartphone that's truly worthy of being the best in the world.